Hi, welcome to Minn Kota. In this video, we'll be talking about different battery types and showing you how to connect batteries in series for higher voltages. Here we have three deep cycle batteries and a smaller starting battery or crank battery up on the uh, table. And in the process of lifting these up into place, one of the first things that you'll find out about a good battery is that it's very heavy. That's because of the battery construction using lead and lead oxide for the battery plates. Deep cycle batteries have fewer plates, but they're actually thicker in construction. They're designed to deliver a high amp hour for a relatively long period of time. A starting battery, on the other hand, has similar construction, but the plates are thinner and actually more plentiful in most starting batteries. That's because a starting battery is designed to produce large amounts of amperage to start an engine and then immediately be in the process of being recharged by the engine driven alternator. So a little bit of different battery construction types. All of these batteries, however, are flooded lead acid type. So they are all similar as far as the battery chemistry goes and the method uh, or the type of electrolyte. Multiple or different types of batteries can be used um, for our purposes. Of course, to operate the trolling motor or the electric motor, we want to always be sure to use deep cycle batteries. The deep cycle batteries will simply be able to hold up a much longer period of time. They'll be able to withstand a far greater number of discharge and recharge cycles. In fact, some battery manufacturers state that with proper battery care, a deep cycle battery can easily last over 300 discharge and recharge cycles. So for the average owner, that could uh, equate to maybe three to five years. If batteries are not properly cared for, battery life will suffer. And one of the most common ways that uh, batteries can actually be uh, damaged is failure to recharge the battery as soon as possible after use. So if you are uh, trailering the boat uh, from the launch point or from the lake back home, as soon as you get back home, be sure to plug in that onboard charger. And we recommend, of course, choosing a Minn Kota onboard charger for that purpose. And here we have an example of a Minn Kota 460 PC charger. PC for precision charger. We also have additional chargers in our product line, and if you'd like to check them out, simply go to www.mincotamotors.com for a complete line of onboard and portable chargers that we produce. So let's take a look at these batteries and how we connect them in series for multiple voltage or higher voltage. Let's use our battery uh, VOM here, first of all, and just take a quick reading of each one of these batteries independently. Now we're gonna use this little inexpensive Craftsman VOM and set it to check uh, zero to 20 volts because we're going to be checking each battery individually. With, uh, when we have the batteries connected in series, we'll actually switch up to a, a zero to 200 scale. But at this point, we'll simply connect this and placing this so you can see it, we'll connect our B plus and B minus leads or probes to the appropriate battery posts. And we can see that this battery is in a partially discharged state. It's about 11.4 volts. This next battery will do the same thing. Again, checking B plus, B minus. And we see that this battery is about 12.49. And the third battery is at 12.35. So all three of these batteries could actually be recharged at this point and should be recharged at this point prior to use. So now let's connect these batteries in series for 36 volts. So what we'll use is a series connection lead to connect this is going to be our low side battery. This is the battery where our negative lead going to the trolling motor, to the electric fishing motor, is going to be connected. 
So first of all, we want to talk just a moment about safety. Anytime you're working with lead acid batteries, it's a good idea, of course, to make sure that you're not wearing any jewelry. If you happen to be wearing a watch, make sure that you remove that. We don't want to bridge across anywhere where we could have potentially hundreds of amps discharging through a, a ring on our finger uh, or any other jewelry that we might be wearing. Additionally, it's a good idea to wear some eye protection. Um, shielded eyewear is always a good choice um, or eyeglasses uh, is certainly a, a good idea as well. And again, the electrolyte in these batteries is highly corrosive. So you might want to wear a old shirt or an old pair of pants when you're working with batteries. So let's make a connection here. From the B plus or battery positive of our low side battery to the negative post on our middle battery. We want to make sure that we make a good sound connection here. And I'll make these connections at this point just to show the effect of connecting the batteries in series. Again, when we connect in series, we are increasing the voltage. So let's use another series connection lead. And from our middle battery, we're going to connect the battery positive, this post, over here to the battery negative on our high side battery. Why do we refer to them as low, middle, and high? Well, one reason is because it removes the confusion out of labeling them batteries num uh, number one, two, or three, or battery A, B, and C, or some similar naming convention. By calling them high side and middle and low batteries, we know precisely that the low side battery is the battery that has the lowest voltage potential. So right now we have all three of our batteries here, our deep cycle batteries, connected in series. And so if we go to set our VOM on a zero to 200 scale, we should be able to see a significantly higher voltage across these battery posts. So if we go to the B plus terminal here on the high side battery, to the B minus terminal on our low side battery, we see that we have 36.2 volts at this point. So it's the combined voltage of all three batteries. Now what happens if we go to the uh, B minus post over here on our low side battery? Well, we can do that. And we'll see that we still have 11.3 volts. So this is our low side battery. If we go to the positive post of the middle battery, we have 23.8 volts. And that's due to the fact that this battery is sitting here only at 11.3. It's in a, a partially discharged state. So it was uh, not recharged the last time after it was used. So if we go again over to the B plus of the high side battery, we find that we have our 36.2 volts. Now normally with three fully charged batteries, we would actually have in excess of 36 volts. Each fully charged battery should actually stabilize at somewhere around 12.6, 12.7 volts, or maybe even 12.8 volts in that uh, general vicinity to indicate that the battery is fully charged. So how do we connect our onboard charger to all three of these batteries that are series connected for 36 volts? Many customers call and ask, do I need to remove the series connections between the batteries when I recharge the batteries? And the answer is no. This MK460 charger is a four bank charger that actually has a maximum of 15 amps output per bank. Now they are labeled bank number one, two, three, and four. But it really doesn't refer to anything. We could connect the uh, channel one output lead to the starting battery and 
channel 2 to our low side battery, channel 3 to our middle battery, and channel 4 to our high side battery. So let's take a moment to do that real quickly here. Now the unique thing about the PC charger is that it is possible to select the output of each individual channel to match battery type. Now it automatically defaults or it's set to default to flooded lead acid type, which all three of these batteries are. But if you are using an AGM battery, which would be an absorbed glass, uh, glass mat battery where uh, there is not a excessive amount of liquid electrolyte, the only electrolyte in an AGM battery is the electrolyte that's held in suspension between uh, fiberglass uh, uh, separators between the uh, uh, battery cell plates itself. The battery is filled with the electrolyte or each cell is filled with electrolyte. The excess is poured off and the only electrolyte that remains then is that that's held in uh, those uh, absorbent uh, fiberglass mats between the, uh, the cell plates. So an AGM battery is a completely maintenance-free battery. You cannot add liquid electrolyte or distilled water to that battery like we can here. All of these three batteries or four batteries are actually uh, batteries of the type where we can remove the cell caps and monitor the electrolyte. So we can add distilled water to the individual cells in each of these batteries if necessary. Now we always want to take a quick look before we hook the charger up and examine the electrolyte levels. And we want to make sure that those plates at least have some electrolyte over the top of the plates. And if any plates are exposed, we want to add a little bit of distilled water so that the plates are submerged. Then after charging, we'll take a follow-up look at each individual cell and if necessary, top them off with additional distilled water. So let's take this channel one from the output here from the 460 PC, and that will be the leads that we connect to our starting battery. And again, we have battery positive over here and a ba uh, battery negative on the opposite post. So let's connect that, make sure that everything is looking clean. Now this battery post over here could actually stand a little cleaning. It wouldn't uh, hurt anything at all to do that. Clean connections ensure that we have a good electrical connection between the battery and in this case, our, uh, our engine, our outboard motor for good starting purposes. And of course also, the starting battery is the battery that we would recommend that you use to power all of the onboard electronics. Um, the three batteries here that are used for the trolling motor are best left separated or independent from that starting battery. So now we can take our channel two output and this MK460 charger is essentially four independent chargers built into one enclosure. So when we make this connection, the charger actually ignores the series link that's being made between the low side battery here and the middle battery. So let's connect this lead. Again, we have the red lead going to the B plus post on our low side battery. The black lead going to our B minus post, which is also providing our battery negative, our low side B minus to the trolling motor or electric motor. So let's connect that in place. The next set of leads then, we will connect to that middle battery. So this is the output 
from channel three or bank number three. And again, the red lead to the B plus or B positive of this middle battery. Make sure that that's good and tight. Same thing with the connection to the B minus terminal. And you'll note that the terminals on these three batteries are all nice, and clean, no evidence of corrosion. If we had any corrosion when we're making these connections, we would want to be sure to clean them off. And that can be done with a uh, solution of, of baking soda and water. And then of course we would want to flush that with fresh water after cleaning away the corrosion. If we had to use a brush or something of that nature. Now we're going to connect the B plus lead here to the positive post of the high side battery. Again, the high side battery is the battery that has the positive lead from the electric motor connected to it. And then we'll connect the B minus lead to the battery negative terminal on the high side battery. Again, we like to refer to the batteries as high side, middle, and low side because it removes the chance of confusion one person's battery number one, two, or three might be the next person's battery one, two, three, just the opposite. And so there's always a chance for confusion if you label them by number. But referring to them as low side, middle, and high side, it removes that chance of confusion. So now, with our charger plugged in, all the connections made, we can go over here and connect this to our correct input voltage. And we can see what's going to happen. Well, first of all, all of the charger lights lit here. And momentarily, when you first plug the charger in, it's going to show me what each battery is type is selected and it momentarily flashed there to flooded on all four of these and right now then it has gone to the state of battery charge so it's good to keep in mind that the LEDs here shown alongside on each of the channels serves multi purposes it not only indicates the type of battery when you press the button and release it but it also now is showing me what condition each of the batteries are at. So all four of these batteries are showing 25% charged. Now as the batteries recharge, the light will go from 25 to 50%. And we can see right now that the 50% light came on on this particular battery. This one is still, our low side battery here is still at 25%. And that one's probably going to take a little longer because remember that one was down at 11.3 volts. This battery, our channel number three battery, which is our middle battery, has also gone now to 50%. And the same thing can be said for the high side battery, which is also at a 50% charge condition. So as we were to leave these connected, we should see the lights progress until the point uh, gets to uh, where the battery is 100% charged on all four of these. Now, if the charging lights don't function as you expect, be sure to consult the battery charger user manual. And the charger manual will tell you exactly what uh, any unusual displays 
if uh, we happen to see a blinking red light um, or a yellow lights flashing after a length of time, it will explain what those error codes are. And you can then uh, determine if the battery itself is good or bad. If a battery uh, cannot be charged after 24 hours, um, it's going to indicate that. For example, here, a flashing green and 25% yellow indicates that the battery is less than 10.5 volts and the charger is in the low power safety mode. And if the battery does not rise above 10.5 volts, uh, then it's a matter of disconnecting that and making sure that any uh, loads are disconnected from the battery and, and try again. So uh, it will explain to you what's going on and you know if there are any error codes shown. Now our, our middle battery here, this one at this point, is the battery that's currently showing us that it's in a 75% charged condition. So we'll actually stop the charging at this point. So I'm going to unplug the charger. And now we'll concentrate just taking a closer look at this middle battery. Now again, I mentioned that these batteries are all flooded lead acid. They have cell caps that can be removed. So we'll just use our blade screwdriver to come in here and pry that out set it aside and again we want to uh, be aware of the fact that this is a liquid electrolyte this is a flooded lead acid battery and that this electrolyte is highly corrosive and uh, you may want to wear some older clothing when you're working with these batteries uh, because any acid spilled on any uh, blue jeans or shirt uh, is going to very quickly result in some holes that you uh, don't necessarily want to have in a new pair of jeans. So let's set those aside. And again, now we have access to the individual cells. We can take a look down into each cell. If we had a small flashlight, we could actually look down in each one. And all of these are uh, actually full, uh, adequate levels of electrolytes, so we don't need to add any additional distilled water to raise the level. And since this is in a partially charged condition, battery condition is always one of the things that customers will call and ask about. Uh, oftentimes customers are calling and commenting on the fact that the motor doesn't seem to have as much power as it used to have. Uh, and that can be due to uh, batteries getting a little age on them. Again, if they haven't been properly cared for, that's the quickest way to, uh, to destroy or ruin a battery. Also, if the electrolyte levels are not kept up where they belong, in the case of a flooded lead acid battery like this, or if we have marginal or poor electrical connections anywhere at the individual batteries or elsewhere in the boat. In many cases, these batteries are located at the back of the boat and the bow mounted trolling motor of course is located at the bow and you have to have power up there. Power is usually delivered up to the front of the boat via electrical cables that would in this case connect to the low side battery negative and the high side battery positive. And you'll notice that there's no harm in me connect, uh, touching these. There's no danger of me getting a shock from touching either one of these posts at this point. So I can do that. But we'll want to make sure that those connections going up to the front of the boat are good, clean, tight, and that they're adequate gauge. Uh, in all of our owner's manuals, we reference a suggested cable gauge for the various lengths and the amp draw of the motors that you have uh, installed on the boat. So you may want to make sure that you abide by that uh, chart to minimize the potential voltage drop from the batteries up to the receptacle and in turn to the motor itself. So let's take a moment here just to test this battery. Now oftentimes customers will call and it'll be the last thing that they really suspect is that their battery is bad. So how can you test a battery? Well, first of all, we can do a very quick and simple 
voltage check as we did before, you know, so we can take a look here and see what this battery did come up to. Again, red lead to the B plus post, black lead, and currently we have this particular battery at a 12.89 voltage. But how do are we, how can we be sure that that voltage is going to stay that high when this battery is being used? Well, that's where an inexpensive device like this battery load tester comes into play. Or what you can do is take the battery to a battery retailer and they will be happy to test that battery for you and determine if the battery is holding a voltage. But since we have this battery tester, we'll just quickly show how it's used. We clip on to the B plus terminal and the B minus terminal. And we can see here that we do have a voltage at this point is shown at actually probably this is not as accurate as my digital meter. It's showing me a voltage of maybe about 12 and a half volts. I can apply a load by using this rocker switch. And it tells me that I should press the load switch for a maximum of 10 seconds. Internally in this load tester, there's a, uh, a high resistance uh, coil that passes current through that. And so as we do that, we should be able to watch that needle and it should stay up here in this green area. If it happens to deflect down into the yellow area, that indicates the battery is weak. If it drops way off here into the red area or into this arc over here, that's an indication that the battery is bad. So let's just try that. And again, we'll count approximately 10 seconds. And we can see that that needle stayed within the green operating range while we were subjecting this battery to a load test. So we can be assured that this battery is going to hold a charge when we get out and are using the boat and depending on that uh, electric fishing motor to move the boat around or maneuver it uh, as, uh, as we want. Now another method of testing the battery, especially if you have a flooded lead acid battery like these, is to use a hydrometer. And a hydrometer is used to measure the specific gravity of the electrolyte in each cell. And we want that to be fairly consistent from one cell to the next. And a fully charged battery is usually going to have a specific gravity of about 1.265 or higher. So we can actually draw up some of that electrolyte, bring it up into the glass tube, and we can see that it is floating here. Now this could actually stand a little recharging yet because it's indicating me that to me that the specific gravity is at about uh, 1.250. So it's a little on the low side. It's indicating that it's fair in this particular cell. Now when we want to evacuate that electrolyte, put it all back into the cell that we removed it from, and we'll move over here to the next cell and see if we get similar results. Get rid of the air bubbles that were there as well. And again, now this one is showing us a uh, specific gravity of about 1.2, uh, um, about 1.200 actually. And so again, we see some differential between cells and it's up at the upper level of the fair condition. Again, evacuate that electrolyte want to make sure that we don't splash any of it out here and onto ourselves. Again, draw up the electrolyte from this cell. And again, we're seeing 
Similar results there. We're seeing it again at almost 1.200 again at the upper level of the fair condition. So these batteries are not, uh, are not new, they, they have been used. So let's go here, to the next cell. Similar results. So completing the charge cycle on this battery should actually bring that specific gravity up a little higher. You'll notice this one is actually a little bit better. We're looking here closer to 1.250. Evacuate that electrolyte back into the same cell it was removed from. And now we'll go back over here. Get rid of those air bubbles. And we can see this one is about 1.225. So it could stand a little further charging to bring that specific gravity up to where we would be in the green area. It would be floating at that level with the upper surface of the electrolyte in the glass tube. Now before we put this away, one of the things that we would want to do is take some fresh water and actually siphon that up and into the tube and flush any remaining electrolyte or acid out of the, uh, out of the tester. So as you can see, we have two good ways of testing the battery condition. We can look at the voltage, but again, it doesn't necessarily tell us how, it's gonna, how well that battery is gonna hold the charge. And we can use the load tester, and that's gonna show us how well the battery holds up under a discharge load. And we can also do that specific gravity test of the electrolyte and see what condition that is at. Uh, again, it'll vary somewhat between battery brands, but generally they're going to be looking for a specific gravity of 1.265 to 1.275, right, uh, right in that area or that vicinity. And now we can take and put these cell caps back on, snap them back into place, push them down, and again, Push this one down into place. For more product videos or to order replacement parts, please visit www.minkotamotors.com.